Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. It is Mother's Day weekend 2018. And as you can see, if you're a regular watcher, I am standing, not sitting. This is the time when the preacher stands up and puts emphasis on going fly fishing here in Texas. As you know, you can always get more details at www.texasflycaster.com. But it's on. It's fully on now here for carp here in North Texas. And as I have gleaned and looked at information, um, there are uh, other places that are that are really kind of turning back on too. The wind is still a factor as you can hear today. And we and we do have a uh, we do have a uh, civil defense uh, tornado uh, tornado horn in our backyard. So that's a that's a random thing that shouldn't be happening on a Friday. Don't ask me why. Anyway. Uh, let me just go through the list. It's a long list. Hopefully this thing won't kick in in about 10 minutes and go full on. Uh, TFO uh, came to me and we worked out a deal where I'm now a TFO ambassador. I went to them, they came to me. It's a, it's a mutual thing and you know an ambassadorship includes responsibilities which uh, I just can't get over that horn, uh, which includes things like uh, showing up at events and fly fishing only exclusively TFO rods, which means I've got to go get a bunch of rods. And uh, I have a soft spot for TFO for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is they make really good fly rods. Uh, number two is, it was the first rod I ever had was a TFO rod. And number three is Lefty Cray. The late Lefty Cray was, you know, their spokesman and somebody who I look up to greatly as far as someone um, to uh, emulate uh, any way possible as small as I am as little as I am uh, he's a guy that that uh, had a huge impact on my life in fly fishing I guess we're going to get the full treatment this time I don't know I don't know if it's going to run or not let's take a break for a second and we'll be right back Okay, so I'm guessing they might be done with testing the tornado siren, civil defense siren that's in my backyard about 70, 100 feet away. It's very, very loud. But anyway, back to TFO. It's a great company located in Dallas, Texas, and it's, I'm really glad to be on board as an ambassador with them. I'm not sure what all that entails, but there's a pretty long list of things I've got to do for them, and hopefully there's a, a, some things they'll do for me. Meanwhile, um, I have been in contact with fly fishing guides that I know here in Texas and if you're a guide be sure you email me or send me a text message with your photos from fly fishing for the previous week. The deadline is 1 p.m. on Friday for having your photos run in the report. I never intended this report to be about me. It was more, I'm, I'm a journalist, I have a degree in journalism, so it's more about you guys and what you're doing than I, I could ever care to see myself. I've already seen, I, I hate being on this thing, but I have to do it because nobody else would come in here and do it with me. Uh, so that's that. Uh, send me your photos. They need to have information like when, where, and who. And when I say where, you don't have to give away spots. Just tell me where you were and when and who the person is in the photograph. And uh, that's all I need. I'll be glad to run your photos of your fish. If you're a guide or not a guide, anybody who's catching fish on fly in Texas, just send me your photos. The phone number's at the bottom of the screen here. Just text them to me and I will save them out of that and put them on this. So I think it's a great idea to, uh, to feature other people anytime I get the opportunity. And if you have stories that you think would fit into what I do here at uh, the uh, Texas Flycaster YouTube channel, I will travel to the ends of the earth to do those stories. So keep that in mind. I'll be glad to come and do a story on, on anything you've got going on with fly fishing in Texas. And I'll do a story for other publications if it's not in Texas. So I do travel throughout the South and I'm glad to go anywhere, um, anywhere, anywhere really, not just the South, to uh, do a story. 
has to have a, a numerical value though to uh, publishers for it to be viable for me to go do it. Locally, what's going on? This is one of the reasons I can't sit down. I'm so excited like a preacher in the pulpit filled with the Holy Ghost about fly fishing here in North Texas. I'm telling you, it is going. I caught three very, very nice carp. I guide for carp on Lake Ray Roberts here in Texas uh, yesterday. And, and I got out there before the wind kicked in. We got 20 to 30 mile an hour winds today, so it's pretty rough. That's one of those things that uh, we deal with. We've been dealing with it this year for an extraordinarily long amount of time. So I'm just about had enough. It looks like next week the wind's laying down starting on Monday. And so that means I'm hitching up the skiff and going on the road. As much as I'd like to just fish my own water here on Lake Ray Roberts, uh, the best thing I can do is actually try some new places and try some new things uh, to catch carp and bass and other locations here in the generally in the North Texas region and over into East Texas. At the end of this, as usual, we'll run the scroll. That'll have a report on conventional fishing in Texas, provided by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Um, there was no time for me this week with all the uh, excitement of, of, of this sermon being put together uh, to, uh, to uh, glean much from the uh, other shows that I watch typically on TV, which is Fox Sports Southwest, which is a good, good one, but kind of broader than what I do. And the second one is very good which is Texas Insider, which um, is really focuses on regions of Texas in horizontal bands across the state, which is kind of rough on the guides who, who actually they call in and talk to because it's such a wide area. Um, but that show is based in Florida. So they've got two different reports and they just plug those in. And uh, I think they do a pretty good job with it. So that's that. Um, what I want to tell you about in the end is I, a couple of years ago I endorsed a product called Hydro Flask. And that's these Hydro Flasks right here. This, these came out before Yeti ever had anything. So that's how long ago it was before Yeti ever made anything for handheld coolers. Well, I noticed in the last year that these stopped cooling and I was wondering what was going on and it was just my, my imagination. So I took them and submerged them because they had a few dings on the bottom and they uh, uh, weren't leaking. But then I checked the website and they do have a test that you can do to see if any, I guess you could use it on anything you've got. If it's not keeping cold, keeping ice for 24 hours, which usually they would keep it for 24 hours. Um, what you do to test it and very carefully is essentially empty it out, pour boiling water in here, and then you feel around the sides to see if there's any place where you feel heat. If you feel heat, then it's compromised and it's no good. Essentially, it's the container that doesn't do anything but contain. It doesn't keep things chilled. It doesn't keep things hot anymore. So I, out of three of these that I own, two of them went back for a lifetime warranty replacement. and because when I did test them, I did feel hot spots on this small, the one this size I had, this one's still good. The ones I had, the neck was losing um, heat or giving off heat and one side was giving off heat. So I don't know what's in there or how that happens other than the vacuum is probably lost. And uh, so I sent that one back. Then I had a 64, which is a pretty big one, and that was completely compromised. So I, I was not imagining things and neither are you. If you use Hydro Flask, I think one of the drawbacks of Hydro Flasks may be in the long run that the, the, they made them lightweight uh, to the point of making the stainless too thin. The big positive on Hydro Flask that I still maintain and I, I will still endorse these guys uh, until they prove me wrong again, I'll give them at least one chance, is that um, <clears throat> they, are, they are lightweight and they are very affordable as far as uh, this type of flask or uh, container um, and secondly they test their stainless steel it's made in China but they test their stainless steel for leaching constantly so they have constant checks on the leaching properties of stainless which if it's coming from China every everything that comes from China should be tested for leaching because there's all grades of stainless now 
Does, does Yeti do this? I don't know. But this sure make this thing weighs, weighs a lot more empty than this one does empty. So you get an idea that Yeti is definitely using a heavier stainless. And you know, the only time will tell whether I grow a third eye in the middle of my forehead or not. But for now, um, I'm waiting for the two new hydro flasks to come back to me. And that's it. That's your product advisory for today. Thanks for watching. Check out the scroll, check out the photos at the end. And thank you to TFO. I'm glad to be on board. I would like anybody that's in the area to contact me if they're interested in seeing, trying uh, the new TFO rods. I will come to you and I will make sure that I have the rods you're looking, thinking about purchasing or trying and we'll, uh, we'll give them a throw. Thanks for watching. I want you to have a great Mother's Day weekend. Tell your mother you love her. If she's still alive, you're lucky. And we will see you next week on the Texas Fly Fishing Report.